What is up everyone? I hope you are doing well. So recently I had to shut down my first ecosystem bowl that I ever created. Now luckily someone reached out to me through Instagram and took on the three little barbs that I had in there. Three, four, can't remember how many I had in there now. He's trying to breed them so he's taken them on luckily and they've gone to a good place. And I wanted to set up my new guppy bowl, panda guppy, whatever they were called. Panda Guppy Bowl Aquarium. I think that was right, wasn't it? So I wanted to set that one up in the place of my ecosystem bowl. So I had to get rid of it. Really annoying, but you know, it had been running for a long time and it was my first one, so it was due for a change. Now, until I sort out my garage and create my brand new studio in the garage, which is gonna be cool, but it's a long way off. It's a lot of work to do and I'm slowly sort of working through it. Until I do that, I am running out of space around my house to keep things. But I've realized that these little bowls fit anywhere in your home. So, with that in mind, I have a lot of my fish keeping books on these shelves. Now, my thought is, if it can take fish keeping books, it can take a bowl aquarium. These definitely weigh more than a bowl aquarium. So, for those of you who watched the original build, I ended up going quite tech heavy on it. We started off with the ONF flat nano light unit on it, which was such a good light unit. It grew the plant so, so well. So we're gonna go and revisit that light unit and get that one back up and running. We also ended up putting an external filter on it, which obviously for a bowl this size was quite tricky, but it worked really, really well. So I think we're gonna go for the same sort of, almost not high tech, but quite tech heavy for a simple bowl. Now, as I like doing on my channel, I'm gonna create a scape that is so simple to do and anyone could recreate it. Aquascaping doesn't need to be hard, it needs to be enjoyable. And as long as you enjoy it, the end result will be good, no matter what you do to it. Okay, maybe not no matter what you do to it, there will be some that may not look great, but as long as you're happy with it, and as long as you've had fun creating it, it doesn't matter what everyone else says. Now, some of you may have seen I was at NT Lab's office the other week, month, whenever it was, I don't know when this video is coming out, so it was a little while ago, I was at NT Lab's office. Now, I took loads of plants over with me, I didn't quite know what the scape was gonna be over there, and that one you'll probably see in a few weeks time when I release it on my channel and over on the NT Labs channel. But I wasn't sure what scape I was going for over there. So I ended up with tons of plants, and I've got a load of epiphyte plants left over, and they are so, so cool. So um, yeah, let me show you the plants that I'm thinking of using. So these are the plants I've got left over. I'm definitely not gonna need to use all of these for the bowl, but I think a certain amount of them's gonna look cool. So we've got a load of different colored Bucephalandras, everything from like Bibilis, 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 um, all the way to Kedagang. And they've got those really cool dark greens and blacks going on. So I really, really like them. And I think they'll look wicked in the bowl. And then I've got Anubius Coffafolia, which has got these like really cool crinkled leaves. I've just always liked that plant. It's a bit of a harder variety to get hold of. I certainly haven't had it in a while, um, but Aquafleur came up trumps for me. They actually got me some of them, so I was well chuffed with that. That label won't go back in. I got some Area Kaolon and some Anubius Bonsai? Yeah, Bonsai. I don't think I'm gonna end up using the Bonsai, but you never know, I might do. But we are not gonna need them yet. We need to sort out the bowl first. Now that shouldn't be too difficult because it's vaguely clean. Oh. I'm gonna need the light unit, aren't I? Hang on, let me go grab the light unit. Right, so as I was saying, this is the ONF Flat Nano. So this is a really nice light unit. It comes with, well, you can get it in two versions, actually. You can get it with this, just this bar here with a little clamp on it, so you can clamp it to like a standard glass aquarium, or you can get it with this like funky stand so you can stand it over something. I've seen people using it for like wabby coos escapes and like um, like houseplant displays and things like that, so really like it. Right, I suppose it'd be good if we get this light unit plugged in. I've got my cable threaded through from the other side. Let's have a look. Oh, of course, it's gonna be set up for the timings, isn't it? I'm gonna to have to turn that one on manually. This one's all run off of an app, so you can set the app up and you can set the timings. So this is just turned on to what it would be at this time of day. Let's get this one brightened up so we can see what we're doing. So we're now connected to the app. I can control it manually, so that's obviously completely off at the moment. And then that is 100% brightness. So you can see how bright this bowl is now. And quite messy. Uh, well, that needs a clean before we do anything else. Just spray a little bit of this on it. There we go, that's better. So, because of the darkness of the plants I'm gonna be using, 
I think a nice lava stone would set this tank off really cool. I think some real dark structure to the aquascape would look really wicked. And then with those darker plants in amongst it. And then maybe something like, I don't know, like some really bright cherry shrimp or yellows or something like that. So I'm going to go and find some cool rocks from downstairs in my scaping area. And let's have a look at what we can build. I am back from my trek to the garage. Now, I thought that was a grey gravel. But when you get it wet, sorry, chilly rose boys, I just want to steal a bit of your water. It is like solid black. Look at that. So, what am I going to do with this handful of wet gravel uh, in that pot? Um, so, ugh. so, I'm thinking, because it's all going to be epiphytes in here, they're not going to be that hungry for a substrate layer. So I'm just going to go with plain gravel on the bottom, lava stone as my structure, and then loads of those dark black and dark green epiphytes in amongst it. It's going to look really like, almost gothic, I suppose. Almost like dark and quite... I don't know, mysterious. Maybe I'm making that up, but I think it's going to look really cool. So, um, yeah, let's get some of that in. We can start building our structure then with our lava stone. See where this scape takes us. I'm going to be picking these little bits of white gravel that have managed to sneak their way in to the black gravel. I'm going to be picking these out for days. I might give up for the minute and just do it once the uh, tank is full and I can see how many are left in there. As you can see, I've got our first bit of lava stone. Love the textures on this stuff. And it's so easy to work with. It is quite sharp, so be careful. But that is going to go right in the back of the aquarium as our main focal point at the back. So I think that is going to sit back there. And we're going to have this sort of, I don't know, valley style, many different bits of rock. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Now I need a few smaller bits to go around it. So I'm thinking to do like... And then I'm hoping that the epiphytes can go in amongst it. Bigger ones at the back, smaller ones towards the front. I think that's going to look really cool. I'm already liking how dark this scape is coming out. Now I've got to work out what other bits of lava stain we need to create the sort of vision I want. Is that working? I'm quite liking that. Two different avenues, two different channels. Quite liking that. I'm a big fan of bowl skates at the moment, just because of how simple and how much fun you can have with them without really even having to do a lot. Like, check that out. Like, it's it's four bits of lava stone, nothing exciting. You don't have to be overcomplicated. And now we're going to fill in these gaps with little bits of lava stone. So if I show you what I mean, what I'm going to do is use bits sort of this sort of size, plonk them in the middles of these, and then I can attach my plants to them. So I'll fill in that sort of channel with all the plants. Done. That's what I love about bowlscapes. Like you could just leave it there, you know, 20 minutes, chucking a few rocks in, messing around with it, making it look cool. Once you get the planting in that sort of area there, you wouldn't be able to see any of the gaps and it would all blend in really nicely. I want to have a bit more of a play and a bit more of a scape. I just want to mess around with a few things. I've got loads more lava stone in different shapes and sizes down here. So I just want to make sure that I've used it all to its best sort of shapes and advantages before planting it up. I love how scaping takes you on funny journeys and takes you in different directions. I uh, present to you the crater. Honestly, I saw those rocks like following the shape of the bowl and I was just like, do you know what? That looks like a meteorite strike. That looks like something's hit in the middle, blown all the lava rock up. I just really like it. I'm not sure I'm going to use the coffifolia now. Like the big coffifolia leaves might just take away too much of the scape. I think it does. I think it's honestly got to be all these little boots of philandras. But I think that's it. I think it's going to be this cool, like, crater-style scape. Yeah, look at that. Right, uh, epiphytes, I suppose, isn't it? So as you probably know, we've got to prep all of these plants now. So we've got to get all the pots off, the rock wall off, everything like that, and get them clean, ready to go into the scape. I've done a big video on this a little while ago where I taught everyone how to, like, take all the rock wall off, take the pots off, do a bit of dividing, everything like that. So I'll link that one down into the comments and maybe put a little thing link up in the top corner. So if you want to see how this is done in real time, you can go and watch that. But I'm just going to get these ready now. 
All our plants are ready to be planted. So we've got Kedagang, which is that nice black and red one. That's that one there. We've got Thea, which is a bit more of an emerald greeny sort of plant. Still dark though, which is nice. I like that. Uh, so that's that one. And then we've got Biblis, which is probably my favorite sounding one. And that's like a dark green crinkled leaf one. So now we've got to glue them onto some rocks and get them in the crater scape. The really good thing with lava stone is if you hit it with a hammer, it breaks up really easily. So we've got all these tiny pieces now to be gluing all of our Bucephalandras onto. So we're literally just gonna take these. I might divide these up a little bit because they're quite chunky. If I can just tease the roots apart, there we go. So yeah, that's probably a bit big for that one, but we're just gonna glue all these rocks to the plants. That'll weight them down. And then it's a simple case of just tucking them into the hardscape and making it look pretty. We've got our Cyanoacrylate Aquarium Glue, we've got our Lava Stone, and we've also got our Bucephalandras. Now we can just commence gluing my fingers to all these rocks and all these plants. We have got all our Bucephalandras glued to their rocks. So you can see it's just a little bit of lava stone on the back and the little baby boost, I say baby, it's quite a chunky boost, um, glued to the back. I've done about six pots. I think that's gonna be enough. I've also got a ton of little plantlets. So they're all the little bits that fell off the main colonies as I was sort of dividing and gluing. So it is now the simple case of just dropping them into the positions that I want them to, and we're planted. It's one of the easiest ways to plant a tank or a bowl or whatever you're doing is epiphytes. Glue them onto a bit of wood or a rock, make sure the wood sinks first, and then just drop them in. You can then position them and articulate them however you want to. I done a video a little while ago, which was like, um, I built a piece of wood that had plants all over it just for one of my other tanks. So if you wanna see that one and see how that's done, you can go back and watch that video, but we just gotta dump all these in. I hope six pots is enough. Now I'm looking at it, I think it's too much, but let's get it planted. And we are finished with the planting. How cool does that look? With that like, it almost looks like a crown of lava stone coming out of all those boosters. So I now, cause this isn't staying here, I need this space cause this is a huge space between two of my tanks. So I need to get this moved out of the way so I can fill it up. Now it's going up here. So I've got to get all these books moved and then I can get it in its final spot sit there proudly and then I can fill all of these shelves with fish tanks and get rid of all the books. Whilst moving the books, I've just seen a shrimp book and I've decided that I am going to be putting shrimp in this bowl. I think they'll just look great climbing over all that rock work. Does mean I wanna get that filter back up and running because they bred and they just done so well with that little external filter and the ONF light unit over the top. Yeah, they just, there was baby shrimp everywhere. Well, I put a foam over the inlet of the filter so that they couldn't get up there, but there were so many babies. so. I'm gonna replicate that on this shelf. So anyway, let's get these books moved. <laughs> now we can fill it. It's a little bit milky, so uh, I think I'll bring you guys back once it's clear in a couple of hours. It has been a couple of hours and it is cleared up lovely. It looks crystal clear. The stupid thing is I said I was gonna put that external filter on this. Now I have cleaned it, but I still think that's gonna kick up a bit of dust. Um, so yeah, that could be annoying. Even if it does kick up a bit of muck in this aquarium, it's not the end of the world. At least it will remove it. And we're gonna wait for a week or so before getting any animals in here. Definitely gonna go for some shrimp though. I want this like, I've got this thing in my head now, flamey sort of theme, yellows, oranges, reds, that sort of thing. I think that'll look really cool in here. But we'll get the filter running on it. The other thing I've got to do is I've got to put the dechlorinator and the bacterial booster in here. Because again, a couple of hours ago, I really wasn't thinking and I needed something to eat. That's what I needed. I needed something to eat and I needed to refocus. So dechlorinator, bacterial booster, external filter, then we'll leave it for a week. So uh, let's crack on with this a minute and get this job finished. So we've got to get our tap water safe and our filter starter in there. 
Now these are both, I think five mil, 10 mil per 50 liters. So it's literally like two mil, if that. So we'll do the tap water so first, two mil of that, and then two mil of the filter starter. And that will get everything kick-started, ready for when our shrimp, oh, where's my two mil, there it is. Ready for when our shrimp come home, probably in a week or so. The good thing is with this, all that lava rock is gonna be alive. There is so much surface area on there, it's just gonna be an absolute colony of bacteria and stuff keeping that tank clean. Right, now for the external filter. Now this is a little external filter that we're using. So it was cut and set up for this tank a little while ago. I've pre-primed it because you just fill it through this cap here, um, fill it up with water. So I've already filled it and I'm hoping that I can just sit it beside this bowl somewhere in there. Oh, I'm gonna have to definitely hide that inlet and outlet. This needs a little bit more tinkering because I'm not having that inlet sat there. There we go. We have managed to position the inlet in behind that big rock. And then this one's just sat next to it at the moment. I might sort of anchor that one in with a zip tie or something to hold it next to this one, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes. It's looking funky, look at that. Looks so good. Right, let's turn this filter on and see how much waste we get out of it. Please be clean, please be clean. A few bubbles, but I think we can cope with a few bubbles. Oh, we are fine, it's just bubbles. Excellent. Right, so that's it. We've dechlorinated, we've bacterial boosted, we've got the filter running. Like I say, I might grab some media out of another tank just to give it a little bit of a boost, but we are done. I will see you back here in probably a week, 10 days, something like that, and then we can get some animals in here. We are back after 10 days and the bowl has settled so well. The filter has properly polished that water. It looks insanely clear. Now, I know some of you will be saying like, Booster Philandras can be a bit expensive. So like six pots of Booster Philandra from where I am, probably about 30 pounds, something like that. It's not a great deal of money, but there are cheaper plants out there. So just as an alternative for you, you could have used Anubias Nano Bonsai for this, and that would have been absolutely fine, would have grown exactly the same, you just wouldn't have got those colors. So, you know, if you are looking at doing it a little bit cheaper, there are cheaper plants out there. But anyway, let me take you off the tripod and show you exactly what, well, how it's all settled in. So here we go, it looks so cool. I like how you can't see the edges of the lava stone sort of thing, it sort of takes you a minute to sort of pan around and see all the edges of the lava stone. And then all of these little booster philandras just look so cool. Almost reminds me of like a mountain with all the jungle plants or jungle trees beneath it. You know, if you imagine that in like times a hundred scale, like sort of thing, it looks so cool. But anyway, enough waffling about the tank. I want some shrimp. so. I'm gonna collect some oranges, some reds, some yellows. I think a good fiery mix of shrimp to go in this bowl would look epic. Now, a big shout out to Maiden Ed Aquatics at Taunton. Went into the shop today and they had some super cool cherry shrimp. But I say cherry shrimp, but they are different colors. Now I've just decanted them into a jug and you won't be able to see them. I have got orange, yellow, red, and black, which is a bit more blue than black, but I'm okay with it. So I'm continuing that crater, meteor, flamey theme going through. I think they're gonna look great. I'm gonna get them drip acclimatized, acclimatized, acclimated. I'm gonna get them dripped into the aquarium, get that done and then release them. Then probably give them a day or so to settle down. Once they've settled down and they're buzzing about, I'll show you exactly how it's all finished up and how it all looks with the shrimp buzzing about. It's gonna look great. I'm really excited for it. The shrimp are all acclimatized. Obviously the lights are off, everything's chilled out. I've just topped up the bowl because it drained a fair amount of water out. And I did have to empty my little jug a couple of times because it did fill it up. But I'm gonna net them out, get them in, and then, ah, oh, they just look so good together. Right, let's get a net and get them out. You always have to be a little bit careful with shrimp because they can be a bit jumpy. Move that light back a minute. Ah, oh, yes, I can already see the orange ones swimming about. Come on, lad, off you get. 
There we go. Right, let's give them a bit of time to settle in and we'll come back and see them once they've settled. There we go, the shrimp have settled, the boost philandra hasn't melted, everything is doing so, so well. The whole aim of this ended up being that just showing you that it's really simple don't need to be complicated it doesn't need to be difficult a load of epiphytes some lava stone job done Every time I do escape like this, I just want to get my garage done. I want some racking with like, I don't know, 20 of these on, just all different types, bowls, vases, I don't know, all sorts of different things. I think this is why I enjoy doing bowlscapes so much at the moment. It's because, well, I say bowlscapes, small tanks and bowlscapes, they're so changeable and it's so easy. You can pick them up, you can change a few different elements in them and it's a whole different scape. I hope you've had fun watching it. I certainly had fun scaping it, so it's been uh, it's been a really enjoyable process. It was a little bit different to what I thought it was going to be, but I'm happy with the way it turned out. And as I always sign off my videos, I will see you in the next.